Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Um, it's been a little while since I've made a video, so I thought I'd better get, better get up and do one. Um, this is one um, I was planning to do a while ago, um, and it's basically creating symbolic links uh, for use with RetroBat. Also, we're creating windows because you could, you could use them for anything you want, but you know, in this, this scenario, we're doing it for, for RetroBat. And the idea being that you know, normally RetroBat is self-contained in its, its own folder, which is one of it. You know, it's good points. Um, but if, say, you run on your PC and you're getting a bit on disk space and you've got another drive in your PC or you, pl you can plug in a USB drive or something, um, obviously, you know, it'd be good to be able to use that to put some more ROMs on there or move some ROMs across to it to free up some space. Um, so basically, one way, an easy way of doing it is to create a symbolic link, uh, which is basically just a shortcut or a pointer from one folder to another. So um, I'll show you how to do it in two seconds, but it's basically... Um, like I say, just just putting that link in, so when an application like RetroBat comes along, reads a file, you know, one of the ROMs folders, for example, um, it thinks it's reading it from the RetroBat ROMs location, but in reality, in the background, it's actually reading it from um, a folder on a different drive. Um, so you don't have to change anything in RetroBat. You don't have to sort of muck about and, and change anything. Cause it's it's kind of it's coded to look in the ROMs folder. Um, but yeah, so you can basically trick it into accessing a ROMs folder in a different location. Um, so yeah, let's just go on and do it. Should be fairly quick and easy um, demo this one. So here on the left, I've got fresh install of RetroBat. It's RetroBat version six, and you might recognise this if you're using RetroBat already. Um, inside the ROMs folder is all the pre-populated folders for all the systems that it supports. So I'm just going to pick one. Uh, I think PS2 because it's. I mean, this is a system that would hold some bigger games because they're disc-based, so you might want to put it in a different location, but also it's, <laughs> it's easy for you to spell. Um, so over here, um, so this is my C drive here, I've got an X drive plugged into this into this PC. It's actually a, a Windows storage space. Um, for those who don't know, you can plug in multiple hard drives and kind of pull them together into one big drive. Uh, so that's what this is, um, although that's not important. <laughs> so it's just another drive to point to. So. What we we'll do is we need to create the, the link here, but obviously if the PS2 folder always exists, it gives an error. So what you do, I mean this is empty, so I could delete this and create it over here, or I could just right click and cut and then paste it here. So it's gone from there, it's now sitting in the destination where we want it. Just go in to confirm it's completely empty. Come back up again. So we need to run a quick command, very simple command from the uh, from command prompt. Um, so I'll just do a quick search for CMD, command prompt, and then one thing you want to do is run administrator. You need admin, admin rights to create these links. So just do that. Just going to give me the elevation prompt there. Right, so good old command prompt. So if I just paste this command in, so the command we use is a standard command built into Windows, and it's called mklink, so make link. Um, slash D just says we're linking from one directory to another, and um, by default, um, when you create a link, you can create a link for a file. So you can have you know, a text file in one location, actually points to text file somewhere else. But in this case, we're doing directory. So it's simply slash D for directory. And then the first one is the full path to your to your source. So obviously the PS2 folder doesn't exist there. So it's going to create a folder in here called PS2. And it's going to link it to this folder here, which obviously does exist. So for this to work first time, you know that PS2 folder shouldn't exist here. But it should exist here. So, I've done this right, and that's it. So, symbolic link created from there to there. So now, if we look back in here, it's probably recreated. Yes, it's recreated the PST um, folder, and it's got this little shortcut link to it. So, if I double click here now, so you can see Windows still thinks it's pointing it on the C drive to RetroBat ROM PS2, but in reality, we're viewing what's in here. So this is why you know, RetroBat will just work and think it's looking in the original location. And just to prove that, if I right click in here and say new text file, you can see it appears on both sides. So like I say, so this is all a shortcut that's looking at this destination. So hopefully that's not, you know, that makes sense. Like you can see it quite clean on the screen there. So like I say, you just drop, drop your PS2 games in here now, you know, um, just as a basic example. I'm not gonna copy an actual game in, but you know, you drop a game in like that, You've got game ISO, and then it appears in here. So then you just go into RetroBat and do a do a scan for games, or you know when it starts up, it should pick up the new games anyway. But that's it. That's as easy. It's just that single command 
um, which is here. I'll drop it into the description as well. Um, so yeah, and if you want to delete it, if you want to edit, undo that, um, it's just a simple case of, um, I think you delete from this side first to be safe. So um, literally just hit the delete key, it's gone, and then that's it. And then you know, this folder is, is unharmed. So if you do delete the, uh, the symbolic link on this side accidentally, or you know, on, or on purpose, um, it doesn't delete the destination, so you don't lose your files. So you can see the history file still there. The files are still in it. You're not going to lose anything. And then, obviously, if you want to, you can tidy up and and, and delete it here, which I'll do just for completeness. So you know, that's it. Um, you know, there's no commands to run to, to undo a symbolic link. You just just delete the folder, <laughs> and it's gone. So obviously, on this side now, I've got a PS2 PS2 folder missing. But just so just uh, for completeness, and so I don't forget. I'll just recreate it just as a standard file, uh, folder and there we go and that's it so like I say it's very straightforward but it can be very useful if you've got RetroBat on your PC you run a bit of space you want to add some more games and you're running out of space on the drive you've got I mean obviously because RetroBat self-contained in this RetroBat folder you could in theory if you've got space pick up this whole RetroBat folder and move it to another drive if you've got space to do that that's, that'd, be, yeah, that'd be fine um, like I say it's all self-contained I mean there are a few caveats that there are a couple of emulators which store stuff um, in profiles when you use a profile, but that you know that's a minority. The majority of, of Retrobat is designed to run um, in isolation. I mean, having said that, whether they've changed some of those emulators in version six, uh, I'm not sure. So <laughs> don't, don't quote me on that. So you know that be something I'll be I'll be checking. Um, but I know you know one for example like the, the 3D NES emulator, um, things like that, um, live outside of the Retrobat. Um, folder so anyway rambling on now um like i say yeah so you could like I say, you could just move the whole lot but if you didn't have space to do that you could just you know on your bigger drive or me for me my x drive i could create in here a ps2 folder ps3 folder um you know any systems that are quite big or any new system you want to add create them in there and then from the rom side here just move those folders over populate them and then create the create the shortcut on this side and retrobat will be none the wiser so yeah like i say you can use it for other other purposes in Windows. Can't think of the top of my head, but you know if you want to do that you can you can do so. So yeah, all good. Um I hope it was useful, hope it made sense and I didn't ramble on too much. Um and actually I appreciate it. it's not been a it's been a while since I made a video, so I thought I'd better get on and make one. I am still working on on the build, the collection that, that I've got documented as you know, within the Batasera build guide and the Retrobat build guide um, that I've done recently and it's been a while since I've you know done any updates to that. But there is that still work in progress, and there should be some news coming very soon. Because obviously version six has come out now, so that build is kind of transitioning across to to version six, and looking to release an initial build for that very soon. But going to do it slightly differently this time, rather than sort of doing sort of drip feeding system by system. It will be you know one big image. There you go. Um, probably via torrent, not via any other links this time. So um, it should be easier for people to grab, and obviously then you know, load up the torrent and, and download individual items if they want to. Um, but like I say, yeah, that, that's on work and I've been working with some other people on that, so kind of, yeah, hot for the press news. There are, it's not just me, obviously I've created some stuff in the past, but now I'm kind of, there's another team that approached me um, and want to kind of sort of join forces. So, exciting things. Um, and if you are still at the end of the video listening, um, I'm going to put some news on that very soon on, on my Discord server um, and possibly Facebook as well. Um, although, probably, you know, probably prefer to stick to, to Discord for that um, and get spied on in Facebook. But anyway, yes. So, yeah, look out for that news and um, look out for further videos. Um, I'm probably going to make him one. Like I said, I've covered kind of Battle and Retrobat quite a bit. One thing I haven't done yet is something like Launchbox. So I might be doing that next. Um, and I think there's, you know, there's other front ends out there. But also, you know, and I have covered some stuff on Android already as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to look to cover as much as I can, all the various different systems. Um, and then what I try and do is kind of, sort of merge them together, because like I say, the battery build and retro bat build, you know, very similar to these emulation stations, so they use the same same kind of set of ROMs and folder structure. And for launch box, it's slightly differently, but, you know, I'm hoping to build that, but use the same set of ROMs as the base, um, and similarly for other systems. So everything sort of ties together. So in theory, there's kind of one collection of ROMs and games, that you can take and use, you know, with whichever system you want in in Bat Zero, in Retrobat, um, or in Launchbox. Um, it just yeah, 
just kind of set up the front end slightly differently. And obviously RetroArch as well. There's another one I did guide for that a while ago. And I'm probably going to refresh that and do, a, do an up-to-date for 2024. So yeah, hopefully lots of good things coming. Um, just kind of fit it in around family life and work. So it's, it's difficult. But yes, please, uh, if you haven't done already, please subscribe. Um, I've you know, been looking at the stats and there's quite a few people that watch the videos that haven't subscribed. So I really appreciate the subscription. It kind of helps just build the channel. Um, I'm getting close to the 2,000 mark on subscribers, which is great. If I could just get past that, that'd be brilliant. Um, another milestone. So yes, now I'm definitely rambling on. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's useful. Catch you on the next one and look out for the news of the new build. Catch you later.